Oh, hello viewers. Hello everybody. I believe well, let me let me get your introductions first. Well, hello everybody, welcome back to another vlog from Vlog Corner here. Um I'm your humble host and your relaxed humble host, Mike Camo here on a Monday. Monday night at about 11.20. I'm going to be here for maybe um, six, seven minutes. Um, here on the 29th of July, 2019, you've entry 988. We're two away from 990. And we're 12 away from 1,000, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, work was work, but I didn't want to talk about that because it was just, you know, just a normal day. Um, yeah, work was a successful day and everything, but, uh, I actually got to go see the movie tonight and, um, we went to go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, uh, I was actually very, 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 um, I was actually, I loved it actually. Um, a lot of it was period correct and some of the stuff was, it was pure correct. Um, it was a great movie. If you guys don't have a chance to go see it, uh, Leo DiCaprio um, and Brad Pitt play the two leads. Um, there's there's people, Dakota Fanning's in it, Al Pacino's in it for a couple of scenes. I know Al Pacino's still chugging along after all this time. Um, and uh, it's nice to go see him play um, some guy up in um, play some Hollywood, and it, it got, it was, there was something about it that was really good, everything was pure crack, move, the, the music, the cars, uh, the, uh, the styles everybody wore, um, and, you know, the way everybody partied, not that I really know how Hollywood actors partied back in the 60s, but everybody was pretty, it was a pretty interesting movie, um, to say the least. I kind of give it a 9 out of 10. There's some inaccuracies, uh, because there was Charles Manson in it, and there's some inaccuracies of what happened. There's some inaccuracies here and there, and, um, and everything. And it was, uh, interesting that they did that, um, you know, you had to see, you know, the movie was really good. You got to see what an actor went through, how, um, you know, what went through the mindset of them back in the 60s, back in the time when movies were actually, back when Hollywood was pretty wild, but um, in its own right, but not as wacky and crazy as it is now, where everybody has an opinion and um, it's all, it's getting too political and, uh, this is back when um, everybody had their had their roles. Everybody had their set thing to do, and you just did it. Um, I'm gonna say it, it's it was a kind of a it was kind of a. In fact, I think it was better than Stuber that I watched a couple weeks ago, uh, a couple about three four weeks ago, maybe about about a month ago. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is, is because, uh, Stuverse was sort of a, was sort of a action-y, um, well-paced movie, and it just didn't fit. And it just didn't fit, um, the, you know, that mold of what I think of an action movie should be. It was kind of really, really weird. And I thought that this movie would, did a little bit better. Um, and I thought the acting was really good, too. It was really low-key. It was really regular. There was no big explosions. There was no... Um, there was no real... Uh, there was no real fluff. It was just... Um, it was just basically... I mean, I'm probably sure they... They kind of over dramatized some of the partying and some of the drug taking and some of the stuff, but um, I'm pretty sure um, 
they wanted to make it as authentic as possible. The lines, the jargon, um, the way they did the commercials, and the way they showed um, actual movie footage within within a movie, because there's a couple movies that are actually shown in the film, and there's references to different films that were playing at the time. Like there was a scene that um, like there's a scene where Brad Pitt's character drives in his car, and he's uh, driving into a drive-in theater. And there's Lady in Cement that's playing in the movie theater. For those of you, I mean, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra, Detective Flick from the late 60s, which he did many of you know, in his later in his career because he was, you know, he was good at playing the detective type because he liked to talk, you know, because he generally liked to sing. So, yeah, just, he kind of talked as he went. Um, it was an interesting flick to say the least. Um... You know, it was there was some pretty interesting parts in there. There was some pretty, pretty. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that it was uh, there was some pretty raw, raw violence in the film, and I'm pretty sure that you know, in the '60s, you know, um, you know, it's it was kind of be expected, you know, because it's uh, it's Hollywood. You know, you're going to meet some really weird characters. There's, um, this, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a scene at the end where, um, where there's a big fight at the end and it's really crazy how it, how it is and how they did it. Um, I didn't expect it in the very least, but I kind of had a, a feeling that something big was going to go down when, when they started sequencing things a little differently and there was some narration and I'm like, oh, something big is going down the end here um and it takes place in the scene that you have takes place a couple of months i think it was like six months after the uh the events of earlier in the film so it was oh no i think it was a great film um gonna give it a nine nine out of ten because you know it's it was realistic but there was some stuff that was over fluffed but I think you're going to have that. Um, I don't think any movie's perfect or any movie should be praised um, any more than it should be because, you know, Hollywood's Hollywood. There's always going to be some glitz and glam and some over-exaggeration and some stuff. So it's like, it kind of, Hollywood kind of made a movie about itself in a way. So, um, and it, it kind of gave us a look into what, into a different time frame in Hollywood when things were, you know, a little different. People carried themselves a little better. And, well, people carried themselves a while, a little wilder than that because, you know, there is a lot of drinking and smoking and drug use, you know. Um, but that was the 60s. It's set in, um, it's set from February uh, 8th, all the way to August 8th or 9th, back in 1969. So it takes a span. So the story takes a span of about six months. So, um, six months, uh, six months or so. So it's, and I like one of those time lapse movies. It's actually old classic, and the, um, the credits were old school, um, and everything, the way they had everything bracketed, like they used to, you know, how they used to have. Oh, line crew, and they used to have those brackets, and it used to have everybody's names listed. That they did that, um, but yeah, I thought it was really cool. Everything was pure correct, um, you know, you know, yeah, you know, the guys always used to dress, and you know, the guys in Hollywood used to dress pretty flashy. The girls used to dress pretty flashy, the mini skirts and um, everything else. Um, you know, this is just very correct. It's just stuff that I kind of expected from the 60s, uh, the late 60s and everything. So, and they were wild times from what my mom and dad said. So, um, and the movie captures this, obviously. Um, would I love to go back in time and experience it a little bit? Yeah, but um, maybe just for a day or two, but maybe not for a whole lifetime because that would be different because 60s were a little... Um, they were a little more unforgiving, so to speak. Um, and 
you know. I didn't live then, so I really don't know, but it was I'm pretty sure it was a different world, and the movie shows it, so. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had a fun time. I see Megan talking to her a little bit, and um, seeing what's going on in life. Um, hopefully I'll hang out with Tom this week, because he's all on Thursday, so it'll be good to just go out and uh, see him, and or him come on come on down here for a bit, so, um, actually, I might have him come down here for a bit, actually, we'll see, um, we'll see what he's feeling, so I'll talk to him tomorrow, see what's going on, all right, guys, I'm gonna be this one to do, because I'm already yakking long enough, and I have to go to bed, so I will bid you guys a good night, um, as usual, everybody, long live America, good bless America, long live democracy, long live this great country, um, Long live, long live our freedoms and our rights and pray for the souls of my grandparents um, and also my Nana and also pray for Tom, Megan, April and all my supporters out there. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate all the support and the views. Um, I can't say that enough because I say it too much, um, but I don't say it enough, I don't think, but... Thank you guys. Mike Camo here for another day here on the July 29th, 2018 here for the energy 988. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out for 989.